Warning! Warning! The following program discusses a taboo topic, and although the language is very squeaky clean, it will use words like the following. Poop. Pee. Turd. Blood. Diarrhea. Snot. Condom. And log. Now, I'd like to take a moment to talk about the benefits of composting your own human manure and why the whole world should stop flushing that toilet and start adopting this practice. OMG, that is so gross. Well, not really. Not when you think about how gross what we are already doing is. The gross level of human manure composting pails immensely in comparison to our current system. Oh. Yeah, you see, we spend a lot of wasted energy on our current broken sanitation and toilet systems. We poop and we pee into our drinking water. Not to mention the other substances that get flushed down the toilet such as diarrhea, menstrual cycle blood, cleaning agents, pharmaceuticals, used condoms, and the contents within. Or whatever else you or your neighbors decide to flush down the toilet. Which then gets sent to a treatment plant where they have to figure out how to separate the water from the poop and the rest of it, and then send it back to us to drink, to bathe in, or to defecate into yet again. Uh, gag me with a spoon. I think I'm gonna be sick. That is grosser. Yeah, and this system doesn't really even work, and it definitely is not sustainable. The water comes back with traces of pharmaceuticals, cleaning agents, man-made chemicals such as chlorine, and loads of other junk that you wouldn't want to drink. You see, sometime after you flush, the centralized collection of poop settles and turns into a contaminated sludge, which must be placed somewhere. Then it sits there and builds up and runs off into our clean drinking water and further contaminating and depleting the world's supply of potable water or drinking water. At the same time, we have to use fertilizers on our crops because we're eating food which is taking nutrients out of the soil and then we put artificial nutrients or fertilizers back into the soil in order to get it to grow. You see, this is not the best solution. This is a broken system. The best solution basically is to not poop into your water, hence get a composting toilet or a dry toilet. Now take a look at how a system, a healthy system works. You see we eat our food and then when we excrete the food here in this step, if we compost it, it returns to the soil, it gives nutrients back to the soil, therefore we can grow our food again, of course getting energy from the sun that is a sustainable source giving us food, hence we eat, excrete, compost, and it's a beautiful system that is sustainable. Now, with the current popular system of centralized turd collecting, uh, how we do it currently, you can see in this picture that we eat, when we discard, it just gets thrown into waste, and we call it human waste, and it pollutes. Well, then we have to get chemical fertilizers which we get from fossil fuels. This is not a sustainable source to make our food grow again that we eat, yet we discard, it goes back into wasting, and we have all this waste buildup, and we have to use energy that is not sustainably coming in to continue the food supply. And on top of this, we have to add chemicals to so-called purify it. And did you know that tap water contains over 2,000 toxic chemicals? Even though chemicals are added to tap water to purify it for drinking and cooking in homes and bathing in, they are still health risks. Adding chlorine to water is actually adding a poison to the water we drink. And over time, chlorine taken in small doses will increase the risk of cancer, heart disease, and other health conditions. Almost all public drinking water systems use chlorine to purify water. Other chemicals which are found in drinking water are equally as deadly. Chemicals such as pesticides and fertilizers in your drinking water have been linked to birth defects. Yet, chemicals have been used for years to purify drinking water by killing the parasites that live in it. However, experts say that these parasites are becoming immune to the chemicals and are living after purification treatments. These types of parasites will cause serious health problems in your digestive system. And this water contamination is pretty widespread. 
35% of U.S. rivers and streams are too dangerous for fishing or drinking. 60% of U.S. lakes are too dangerous for swimming or drinking because of massive toxic runoff from industrial farms, intensive livestock operations, and the more than 1 billion pounds of industrial weed killer use throughout the country each year. Two-thirds of U.S. estuaries and bays are moderately or severely degraded, and 1.5 million metric tons of nitrogen and phosphorus pollution are carried by the Mississippi River into the Gulf of Mexico every year. But has unclean water really ever harmed anyone? Well, dirty water kills more children than war, malaria, HIV, AIDS, and traffic accidents all combined. More than 3.4 million people die each year from water, sanitation, and hygiene related causes. Lack of access to clean water and sanitation kills children at a rate equivalent of a jumbo jet crashing every four hours. With all this drinking water in the world, enlightened and advanced cultures are probably making sure that clean water conservation is a paramount priority. Right? Well... Would you be surprised to find out that about 31% of all household water consumption is from flushing? And that the average American flushes five and a half times a day. That's over 2,000 flushes per year. And at the average 3.6 gallons per flush, that comes out to 7,200 gallons per year. Per person. So what if the whole world adopted the U.S. sewage philosophy of defecating into your drinking water and then treating it? Well, for one, it wouldn't work. There is simply not enough water. Given the 7 plus billion people all flushing 5.5 times a day, that's 38.5 billion flushes per day, or over 14 trillion flushes per year. And at the average 3.6 gallons per flush, that's over 50 trillion gallons of water flushed per year. That is 100% simply unobtainable. We don't have those resources. Or even the super not realistic estimate that every single person will use a high efficiency toilet at 1.28 gallons per flush. That's still 18 trillion gallons of flushed water per year. Aside from the amount of water used or contaminated, one must consider the increasing landfill space that would be needed to dispose of the increasing amounts of sewage sludge, and one must also consider the tons of toxic chemicals required to sterilize this wastewater. It's clear that this system of human waste disposal is far from sustainable and cannot serve the needs of the world. And to top it off, this doesn't even consider the rate at which the world's population is growing, and it's expected to double in 35 years. So is there a better system? Well, some that have been suggested are incinerating our excrement, but then we'll just be breathing in fecal dust, which contains high amounts of heavy metals such as cadmium and lead, and that's not good. We could microwave it. <laughs> this is not a joke. Just do an internet search of microwave toilet. There are probably microwave toilet locations near you. We could send it to space, but nah, come on, think of the costs. Or if a rocket exploded in our atmosphere, do we really want a poop monsoon? And do we really need space turds? But as Joseph Jenkins says in his The Humanure Handbook, this could add a new meaning to the phrase, The Captain's Log. Uh, beam up another one, Scotty. You could spend tens of thousands of dollars on a septic system which doesn't completely contribute back to the soil and does still contaminate water supplies. And the contents therein still have to be placed somewhere after your tank is pumped, leading to some of the issues already mentioned. In fact, in the U.S., septic tanks are reported as a source of groundwater contamination more than any other source. 46 states cite septic systems as sources of groundwater pollution. Nine of these reported them to be the primary source of groundwater contamination in their state. So what about outhouses? Well, 
Although they're a step back in technology, it's actually a step forward in practicality. But it doesn't come without its issues too. An outhouse placed over dry soil will pollute 10 feet deep and 3 feet wide. And in wet soil, they pollute 10 feet deep and 50 feet sideways following the direction of the groundwater flow. And that's not to mention the stink and the flies and the mosquitoes which are a nuisance and which do spread disease. How about night soil? The spreading of raw human excrement at crop fields as practiced in parts of Asia? Well, although effective in saving water and supplying nutrients to the ground, this method does produce a foul smell it attracts unwanted bugs and opens the doors to possible hazardous diseases and human contamination. What about the humanure or composting toilet? Well, this does avoid all of these issues. It is low maintenance and very inexpensive. Plus, they have the earth food friendly benefits not offered by any other one of these options. Our poop and pee are phenomenally rich fertilizers that we flush down the toilet instead of using. If we compost it, we solve all aforementioned issues. No sludge created, no landfill space getting used, no contaminating or depleting of our drinking water, and we continuously recycle natural nutrients into the soil. So what is human newer composting system anyway? Well, since this is not a how-to video, I'll simply give a very brief summary of what it is. The how-to video will come later. It starts with a composting or a humanure toilet, and some carbonaceous cover material like sawdust, hence no smell and no flies. When your fecal receptacle is full, you dump it into a humanure compost bin with a carbonaceous cover material like hay, straw, or weeds. And when this bin is full, you let it compost for a period of time before returning it to the earth. No extra water is used, as with flushing. No runoff or contamination, as with centralized systems, septic tanks, and outhouses. No stink, no flies, as with outhouses and night soil. And it refeeds nutrients to the soil. It frees up landfill space. And things that were once not compostable, like meat, bones, eggs, oils, fats, fish carcasses, roadkill, old clothes, molds, etc., are easily composted now with humanure composting. It is the solution to most of the world's soil depletion, water depletion, and water contamination problems. And you acquire the richest compost for free. My baby girl brings 